What's up, everyone? Boa tarde. Uh, that's about all you're going to get from me at the moment, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. All right, first slide. Pretty much when I got the email from uh, Januario to come here, that was my reaction. Ah! TEDx! Luanda, I don't speak Portuguese! What the hell? But apparently that's okay. It's okay to be here and speak English. So I hope you guys bear with me. All right, next slide. That is my mum and dad. Um, my mum is half German, half Ukrainian, and my dad is Nigerian. They met in London in the 70s, fell in love, and decided to get married. Um, and then I was born in Nigeria when I was about eight years old. My mom was like, uh, okay, it's my turn now. And all three of us moved to the UK. My parents are inspirations for me because they've had to deal with quite a bit in their lifetime, challenging upbringing um, to enduring racism. First of, all, first of all, against their relationship and then towards being parents of a mixed child, me. So uh, it's as a result of um, their adventurous spirit and um, all that they've endured, the fact that they protected me from the worst examples of racism and the worst events, um, and as because of all of the cultural connections that they've really entrenched in me, that I'm here today and I'm making the show What's Up Africa, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. So this very um, effective, mathematically correct chart here illustrates all those connections in me, I now live in Holland, you know, and um, yeah, I'm able to make What's Up Africa. Next slide. But it could all have been so, so different, right? Um, as I'm sure many of you guys know, having an African parent, there's a lot of emphasis on education and professions. If you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, an accountant, it's all good. It's all good, baby. But if you want to be an actor, a musician, a uh, copywriter, a creative in an ad agency, um, or a video blogger, like myself, then it's not so cool. You know, it's a challenge, which pretty much means it's impossible. Um, I remember my dad introducing me to other people, like, okay, this is my son. He's going to be a lawyer. <laughs> and then, and then number three, only number three in that list would be, his name is Ikenna. So my actual name is third. I'm like, Dad, seriously? <laughs> anyway, so I guess um, to a large extent, the reason why I became a lawyer to start with um, was to, in a sense, pay back for all the sacrifices that they've made for me. So up until around four years ago, I was a finance lawyer working um, uh, in the States, in New York. And it was fantastic, lots of... Uh, um, you earned money and there's lots of security, but although my dad was happy, I was freaking miserable. <laughs> okay, next slide. <laughs> I'm sure you guys know that feeling, right? <laughs> exactly, all too well, it's unfortunate. So, um, I quit. All right, I quit and when I tried to figure out what it was that I actually wanted to do, I decided to look backwards instead of forwards. I remembered all the great memories of growing up in uh, Lagos. Uh, I remembered the adventurous spirit of uh, my parents and traveling around, and I remembered all the different cultural connections that put me in a pretty, not necessarily unique, because other kids have mixed parents, but put me in a position to be able to comment on and about Africa um, in a pretty special way. So I decided to, that was my trigger to go into journalism and make programs about Africa. Uh, so I started as a radio journalist, really started at the bottom as an intern, um, kind of shocked by the pay paycheck of that. Anyway, um, I was really loving what I was doing. And then the next step was inspired by a US satirical show, comedy show called The Daily Show. I decided to set up What's Up Africa. What's Up Africa is um, a satirical news, comedy, pop culture show about the continent. And it allows me to share my irritations at things like the portrayal of Africa and Western media, 
but at the same time also my frustrations, right, at some of the decisions that are made by political leaders here in Africa or elsewhere when they comment about Africa. And some of those decisions are the same things that my, I remember my dad and my uncles arguing about um, at parties when I was younger. But to give you a taste of the kind of stuff I do, here's an example, here's a short clip um, in which I share my irritation about a real pet hate of mine is evangelical preachers. So let's have a look. What's up, Africa? We all know that religion Volume. is big business. The Vatican City is rumored to have over a billion dollars worth of assets. That's some serious cash. Because we be big but Africans have started following in the footsteps of their European cousins, and unsurprisingly, oh, we're doing it pretty well. Journalist Seyi Rhodes recently made a report about Nigeria's millionaire preachers. Here are some of my favorite bits. I've discovered the secret in God for the higher life. At his home in central Lagos, he showed me his three luxury cars worth over 150,000 pounds. Was Jesus poor? Jesus was a poor man, yes. He was not. Jesus had nothing. No, it's a lie. Jesus was rich and had an accountant. Yeah, no, JC was like the Jay-Z of biblical times. He had an accountant and a secretary, damn it. He was a businessman. Jesus, your six o'clock is here. Man, man, Jesus had an accountant, right? These guys are rolling around in all these big trucks. Anyway, another thing that my show allows me to do is also point out all the big brands in the world who are really trying to break Africa, you know, come in and get the African consumer, but sometimes they just get it so badly wrong when it comes to doing business in Africa. So here's another example. The iconic 1970s fashionable African male. Big Afro, cool, suave, sophisticated, intellectual, and damn right handsome. Right? Wrong? At least it's wrong according to the bosses at Nivea. Nivea recently released a print ad showing a guy preparing to toss a decapitated head with a big Afro and brown skin. The delightful tagline was Nivea. Re-civilize yourself. In other words, if you're a dude with an afro and brown skin, according to Nivea, you are completely and utterly uncivilized. Ugh. But have no fear, all you Mac Mendes, Questlove's, Basket Mouths, and D.L. Hewley's out there, because help is at hand. So, go get your Nivea, go get your Nivea. And the last one, the last example, um, which is an important aspect of the show, uh, is pointing out the more surprising aspects of popular culture on the continent, right? Um, and surprise is a theme that I'll come back to in just a few minutes in the presentation. So here's the last clip. You guys remember this? <laughs> That was Botswana and heavy metal band Rust, who I featured on the show a couple of weeks ago. It turns out these guys are not a one-off. There is a whole heavy metal scene in the country. Check out these photographs from Frank Marshall, giving an insight on the fashion trends from that not-so-underground heavy metal scene. Now, I have to admit, I used to think that anyone who wore leather trousers was kind of, well, an idiot. But actually, leather is surprisingly comfortable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, my dad. Can you imagine my dad now? <laughs> How proud would he be that I'm standing in the stage with my ass in leather gyrating like an idiot? Anyway. Okay, so, so that's What's Up Africa, right? And it's a lot of fun making it. 
but when I started making it, I was quite nervous because I didn't know how people would react to you know, a mixed guy with a very strong British accent commenting on um, affairs in Africa. But thankfully, the reaction has been just wonderful and really inspirational for me to keep going with the show and make it bigger and better. Um, people seem to share a love for the fact that I try and give a more balanced image of the continent. Um, so, but what's important is to remember that, okay, balance, part of that conversation is also giving both sides of it. Not, it's not everything right now, it's absolutely perfect, but what we hear a lot is that, yeah, Africa is rising, Africa is booming economically, you know? It's booming. Um, six of the ten fastest growing economies in the world are in Africa. Foreign direct investment in the continent is up 87% in the past decade. Um, once a byword for famine, the continent is now the tenth largest producer of livestock in the world. So things are going really well. There's a tech boom, and in particular, Nigerians are getting really creative with tech. <laughs> you know? So things are going well. Africa is rising. And like, I, you know, I'm a journalist. I'm lucky to meet some influential people. And yes, I did get the chance to meet the Chinese president, Xi Jinping. And we had a good conversation. It's a fireplace in my office, honestly. It's not the White House at all. Um, so Africa is booming, but, 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 this story about the uh, booming emerging middle class isn't completely accurate, right? Because six out of the ten fastest economies, growing economies in the world may be African, but seven of the ten, top ten, most unequal countries in the world are also in Africa. All right? And as one commentator put it, Africa is rising, but Africans are not. Yeah? Ooh, oh my. Amen. Amen. No, it is happening, but it's, but it's happening slowly. So what is it about this one narrative, this cliche that we all seem to want to accept? You know, the media accepts it. Um, NGOs accept it. It's one narrative. Everything is just positive. We accept the cliche. Why is that? What's, what's it about the power of the cliche that's so important or so effective? I think it's because cliches are safe. You know, they allow us to put things in boxes, tick the box, bam, it's done. Of course, cl some cliches are fun, you know, and maybe a little bit true. Like the, the white guy or the white lady, the, the Pula, is that right? <laughs> the Pula, who loves Africa so much, maybe takes it just a step too far. <laughs> it's a real tattoo, okay? Or how about the cliche? How about the cliche that actually might have a little bit of grain of truth in there? Next slide. If a black person says you loud, you too damn loud. <laughs> you know? And yes, it has been known that in What's Up Africa, okay, maybe occasionally I do play with the idea of the cliche. Famous Dutch celebrity to hold an African baby or any old black baby, in fact, just to promote a campaign about hunger. The cliche is the one-dimensional article by the journalist about the one, that one very positive picture about Africa. The cliche is also the billionaire uh, prime minister or president who enriches himself and his family at the expense of freedom of expression, freedom of speech, just the same power for decades. <laughs> oh, damn, damn. Unfortunate, unfortunate. All right, the, the cliche, um, on, cliches aren't the game changers. Surprises are the game changers. Surprises are our political leaders who see their role in office as a civic duty for the people, you know, who want to act as role models for the present generation and future generations, and who are prepared to take on the biggest international institutions um, on the biggest podiums. Surprises are, People who look at this every 60 seconds in Africa, you know, what happens? And their answer is, next slide, how many passes, you know? <laughs> that's it, shock, horror, what the, f that's it, a minute passes. Surprises are also 
the abused wife and market trader who rises against all odds to become president of her country. Joyce Banda. You know. Next slide. Surprises are our cultural, political, artistic ambassadors, past and present, who perform, who speak, who record material with such sensitivity, such uniqueness, such awareness for their political time that they live in, that they will guide our generation and generations to come. And surprises are also those amazing relationships, those couples who against all odds, against racism, against bigotry, are able to come together and stay together. Yeah. It's beautiful. That's beautiful, right there. Yeah, that deserves a clap. Next slide. If surprises were a meal, okay, they would be that. And if, if, if cliches were a meal, they would be like, Bakuyao cozido. Yeah? Con batatas. Con batatas. I guess my message, right, is that surprises are awesome. Okay? They allow us to live on the edge of our seats, you know? They're spicy, they're interesting, they make life interesting. Oh, amen. Um, What's Up Africa is my attempt to deal in the currency of surprise. I love making it. Uh, I hope it allows other people to think a little bit differently and to be more open to surprises. Um, and I'm very happy about that. Clichés do exist everywhere. They're kind of fun. And to some extent, they do make the world go round. But surprises make the world stop and take notice. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much.